I got some requests to make a video about my study habit and how I use the resources efficiently to study. So I think it's pretty useless making a video like that now. Because without knowing why I am doing a particular thing, why I am studying like this, why I am, I am using this technique, without knowing that, if you are trying to emulate what I am doing, if you are trying to imitate what I am doing, then it won't get you far enough. You might do that for one or two days, then you will stop it altogether. Because that was happening with me all the time. I was looking at all these YouTubers, their steady habits, and I was trying to emulate them, but it never worked for me. It might work for one or two days, then I will spiral down. I will go into binge eating and binge watching stuff because I, I, it will be very stressful and I will become anxious and all. So what I will do is I will share my journey of finding the best study techniques and making my own study habit. Let's get started. For those of you who don't know me, I am Alamin Ashraf, a final year medical student at Ames Bonesha. With this channel, I mean to alleviate the gap that exists between the medical community and the common man. And I want to revolutionize the way Indian medical students approach studies. This will be a five part series. In this video, I'll be sharing my journey in medical school and how I found the first and most important principle of studying in medical school. I came to Ames Bonesha four years back with a lot of hope and big dreams. So I am attending this orientation program with the hope that they will tell me how I should study and what are the problems that I may face in medical school and things like that, that they will tell me what is there in store for me. But they didn't do any of that. What they did is they gave a bunch of boring talks and inspiration to become doctors. Dude, we are very well motivated and inspired. We just came into medical school. We are very motivated. We are very inspired. This is not the time to inspire us. Yeah, there might be some people who might not be inspired because they came into this profession because their parents pushed. If you want to know why you shouldn't be a doctor, you can click here. Links in the description also. Was it for that minority, like some five or ten people, that they were inspiring us, that they were wasting hours and hours trying to motivate us? when they could have used that time to tell us how to study, what are the problems that we might face in medical school and how we should tackle that. But they didn't do that. What I feel is that in orientation programs, there should be talk by seniors. The seniors should come and tell us what were the problems that they faced, how they tackled that and everything. So from that orientation program, I got zero idea of what to expect. So what is coming at me in the future? So the classes started in the month of August and the teachers started teaching. So I'm going back to the hostel and I'm trying to read the stuff from the textbook that I bought that I have. So what I found is that what the teacher taught in class, the full thing is not there in the textbook. And many things that are there in the textbook the teacher didn't even mention in the class so i couldn't process this right because i am coming from this background of studying everything that's there in the ncrt textbook because whatever was taught in class was based on the textbook if you read the textbook everything you will get what the teacher taught in the class that was my 12th standard that is the experience that i have with classes and this was very new to me. This was very hard for me. So with my experience of studying the NCRT textbook, I try to read everything that is there in the textbook. I try to understand everything and remember everything that is there in the textbook because I thought it's all important. It's like the NCRT textbook, I thought. On top of that, I started trying to memorize all the small values that was given in the textbook, like the length of scapula and all those useless things. I was trying to memorize everything. Because my background of preparing for the medical entrance is like that. I had to study all the values that was there in the NCRT textbook because a question can come with that value. So I thought I have to memorize all the small values, all the small things. And I tried doing that. But after two or three days, I burned out. I couldn't keep on doing this. This was too much for me. Like there was so much information in the textbook and there were a lot of values that I was trying to memorize. So I burned out and I stopped studying. I didn't even open the book for next 
three months. You will be wondering what happened after three months. So our mid-semester exams are approaching. We were having these interactions with our seniors. Yeah, some might call that ragging, but I think it's more of an interaction what we get in our college, not ragging. So as the exam approached, our seniors told us, bring your textbook. So we just went to our rooms, we took all the textbook that we had and went to the seniors room. There were some four seniors and we were some five or six people. The seniors, they took one textbook, they started marking, they started highlighting, they started putting brackets and everything. And they finished with anatomy and then they told study the things that we marked and go for the exam. You will surely pass the exam and you will get an above average mark. So I was kind of surprised. Don't we have to study everything? We are studying medicine, right? We need to know everything about the human body. Then only we will be able to make diagnosis. Then only we will be able to treat people. So I had this doubt in my mind. But I was scared to ask the seniors then and there itself. So I just kept this in my head. And we went back. The exam is coming in three days. I tried to read the stuff from the first page itself. But after reading two pages, it took me like some two, three hours. So it was not possible for me to read all the chapters and appear for the exam. So what I did is study the topics that was marked by my seniors. Because I thought anyways, they are telling that if you study this much, you will pass the exam. So I was willing to make that gamble because I didn't have time to study everything. So I studied just the topics that my seniors marked. And for my surprise, I passed all the exams, all the three exams. And there were people who were studying like four hours, five hours daily. And they didn't pass the exam. Some of them didn't pass some subjects. So I was like, I cracked the way to tackle medical school. Now I know what I should do in medical school. So I was thinking like this and what I did for the next exam and the exam after that and for one and a half years I kept doing the same thing. I will go to my seniors just before every exam like one week or one and a half week before the exam. I will make the mark of the important topics. I will study that and go for the exam. And I would pass each and every time. So what do you learn from this? What you learn from this is there are important topics, high yield topics in medicine. And if you study that, you will be able to score above average marks in your exams. This is an application of the Pareto principle. I will talk about Pareto principle in a future video. Then comes the first professional examination. During that time, my seniors were not at the hostel. They were having a vacation. So I WhatsApp the senior that I am close to and I ask him what I should study. Then he sends me some important topics that I should study and he sends me some question papers. He tells me I have this collection of question papers. Just go through the ones, just look at the questions and try to answer them. So I do what he said. I tried to read all those important topics and I tried solving the question papers. So after doing that, after some time I realized that the important topic that he was marking was the previous year questions, the things that came in the previous year questions. That's what he was marking for me. And there were some questions in the question paper that he didn't mark as an important topic. Yeah, there were one or two questions, but they were never repeated. The other things that he told, those questions were repeated again and again. So what do you get from this? What is the lesson to learn here? To know the high yield topic, you just have to go through all those previous year question papers and whichever questions that are repeated, those are the high yield topics. This is one crude way of finding the high yield topics. First professional also I pass with fairly good marks and I go into second year. So in second year, we get this PDF that the seniors from 2013 batch made. It has all the important questions and the answer of every subject in a single PDF. So you don't have to go to your senior to mark all the important stuff or anything like that. So I start studying whatever questions are there in this PDF. Just one week or three days before exam, I started doing that. And I will ask that senior what are the important topics and I will read that stuff also. It was all well and good. So I didn't thought of changing this strategy. 
So the second year was over and I passed all the exam without much hard work or without much problems. So then third year comes, then halfway through third year, that is in seventh semester, I'm thinking and realizing this. I wanted to become a doctor like House MD, a person who can diagnose everything, the person who can relate everything, who can correlate all this stuff and make the right diagnosis. I wanted to be an exceptional doctor. That was my dream. And I think that is each and every one of your dreamers. So doing what I was doing, will I be able to be an exceptional doctor? So I will tell you what I was doing. What I was doing is pumping and dumping. The day before exam or one week before exam, I will pump all the information onto my head. And on the day of exam, I will dump everything onto the paper. And that's how I was passing. I wouldn't remember a single thing two days after the exam. I will forget everything. This is what I was doing. I was just pumping and dumping. I was not remembering anything. So doing this won't make me an exceptional doctor. I realized that it took me almost three years to come to that conclusion that I have to do something else to be the doctor that I want to be. So I started searching the internet. I started searching YouTube and I started reading blogs and everything. I watched a lot of videos and everything. I watched some steady habits of some YouTubers and I tried to emulate that. I tried to do what they were doing. But I couldn't keep that up. I would do that for one or two days, then I will just completely stop everything. Then it's a spiral downward. After two days, it's a spiral downward. I can't keep that. And I will be having a lot of anxiety and stress and I'll be kind of sad. And what I will do is I will watch some TV series. I will binge watch one season of a TV series and eat all the junk food and not go to the gym and all the bad things that I will do after doing two days of following these steady routines of those famous YouTubers. So I couldn't follow anyone's steady routine and I was again back to square one where I started studying the important topics, pumping and dumping. So the seventh semester examination comes, I do the same. I pump and dump. In the back of my head, I have this feeling. I won't become the exceptional doctor that I want to be by doing this. I need to find a better way. So I again started searching after the seventh semester. That is in final year, I again started searching in the January. I started searching all the research papers that were available about study techniques, studying and everything. I watched the videos that told about the mechanism behind how they fix the study routine. What were the principles behind them making that study routine. So I did that research for around one, one and a half months. And after that, I found out certain things. I found out certain tools and certain ways and techniques. I'll be talking about the techniques, tools and everything that I found out after the intense research that I did in the next video. So if you want to see that, subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell so that you will know when I'll be releasing that part. And if you like what you see, leave a thumbs up and share this video with everyone so that I can keep making such videos in the future also. And put in the comments, what were your strategies in first year for tackling the examinations? Bye. Till we meet again.